Good morning and welcome to the Visionary Aging Show. I'm gerontologist Mary Winters and your host of the program. I also own a practice called About Senior Solutions where we provide care management and come into tons of very interesting scenarios where we walk through solutions for families. And I felt really strongly about offering solutions to as many people as we can, get the information out there about the resources and the control that they have to be able to support themselves in a way that will make them feel good. And I think it kind of, it's kind of interesting because we plan so many things for ourselves, like weddings and vacations and uh, all kinds of things. But do we plan what we want in our aging process? Do we look at things that we could reverse and change to make our world better? So that is what this program is about. Today, we have, a, we're going to have a conversation about connectedness. And I think people forget about how, well, maybe we haven't forgotten because COVID really kind of shoved us apart from people. But I have to say, it is something that it's near and dear to my heart. It was something that I did my thesis on and looking at activity and connection and how that improves and supports our quality of life. So we're going to talk a lot about socialization and how everything connects together and actually supports our health. So I don't know if Steve McCullough is on with us today. I may go ahead and we can jump over and have a little conversation with our very own Melinda Hughes. I think she's with us. Let me go ahead and I'll put her her little intro video together first. We'll go, we'll do a backwards show today. So let's see if I can find her, her quick intro here. Good morning, Melinda. Good morning. Happy 2023. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? it? The year just seemed to go by very quickly. It happened. We got here. We did. <laughs> thankfully, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we, I know, in fact, it's one of our Shape Up things. I'll even bring up Shape Up really quick. Yeah. Um, but one of the features in Shape Up is, well, several of them. And they're all interconnected. That's the thing that's kind of interesting too. I have uh, a client I see pretty routinely and I said, please go through this with me. He was a, an editor, a publisher of books and um, wrote several books. And I said, help me out, kind of guide me on, you know, is this garbage or do you think that this is something that really makes sense? And um, so we walked through it and he said, you know, Mary, all these things, while they're separate, they're connected. And yeah. within shape up, you have to have this connection um, within the other um, shape up items. So let me just throw up shape up really quick. Um, let's see, here we go. I'm just going to put a solo on there with it. But so it was kind of interesting. You put this little diagram together and put a circle together with shape up initials on the outside of the circle. And then he started drawing lines back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it was so interesting because I thought, yeah, if you don't have the spiritual community, um, that doesn't create your united family. Your family is not necessarily your blood family, but uh, it is really important to make sure that we're building those connections at your own attitude and the influences in your life. You, to have a healthy life balance, you have to have those connections in your life. Eating habits, often we might eat by ourselves, but that's community when we're eating, physical oh, activity. Yeah. Uh, we know we do better when we're um, when we're connected with other people, and and I do better in in the strength shop because I have I have a one to one coach. Yeah. Then all the things with purpose too. So I just I I completely agreed with him and felt like this was the show that we needed to have today. So awesome. Go back to this. So I see it all the time because people right. come to the strength shop primarily for physical fitness, physical exercise, right. um, the strength, and their eating habits automatically improve when they start the program because they're focused on one of the aspects of shape up and well-being um, in general. Yeah. They're there to, to get better, to feel better, yeah. improve. And so 
so, so it just kind of feeds into their dietary habits as well. Yeah. Um, and then you touched upon having the trainer at the studio too. Um, you know, during the COVID years, my husband and I were so, um, so busy, so overwhelmed that we would go to the studio for our own workouts. And some, a lot of the time we needed to save time. So we would just work ourselves out at the same time. We didn't work each other out. It wasn't as good. <laughs> it was because you're more motivated and it's not because we don't know what to do and we don't know right. how intense, how intensely we need to push ourselves because we do, because we do it with people all the time. It's because you don't, you, there's a little something extra you'll give when someone else shows up to be there with you. Right. Um, so we've since gone back to training each other and taking that full hour to do that. And our workouts have gotten better. Our bodies are starting to feel sore again after the workout. And I'm like, oh, we, sh we shouldn't have cheated ourselves in the, in those, mm. in the time when we were trying to save time. Interesting. Um, because it really is more effective with an instructor. Um, so those, I mean, all of those things are so interconnected. And we think of sometimes as the physical body and the, you know, our mind being two different things, or mm -hmm. uh, we have like, you know, our emotions, everything, everything is so connected into the health of our whole person. It's true. Um, and I think that people in the health and fitness industry and people in the medical community are now starting to see how the whole person needs to be uh, taken into consideration that we're not just treating the symptoms of an illness anymore. Um, I, I participated or I, I watched this, um, really wonderful talk about, um, healing the body from chronic illness that mm -hmm. there is no Western medicine cure for such as like fibromyalgia or things where people are just kind of told, well, you know, it's a lifelong thing. Uh, good luck with it, you know, and yeah. um, there are other modalities that we can use combined with Western medicine. And a lot of those modalities are, are shape up based are yeah. what's the, where's the community that's supporting you? Do you have the spiritual? I mean, this was a medical doctor, a neuroscientist, a medical doctor talking about people need a spiritual community. People need um, their, their friends and family, whoever's close to them. Oh, we, we, the we, yeah, we know statistics or we know through research that mm -hmm. if somebody has 10 connections, they're pretty well set when they go into assisted living, they have more, um, socialization with people outside of the community. They have people who will advocate for them. I'm actually reading this book right now on the lymph system. <sighs> I think we know very little about the lymph system. This is a yeah. doctor who is a cardiologist, um, it's called Lymph and Longevity. Uh, it was a doctor who was a cardiologist, practiced as a um, surgeon. And he said, I started seeing the, the, the simulation or the connection between the lymph system and um, the plaque that was developing in people's hearts. And I guess the lymph system is the only system in our body that touches every single cell yeah. in our body. So there's it's there's so much importance and it's so hard to really understand where we are as far as how healthy we are because there's not a real basic test. But I'll share more of these tidbits. Maybe we'll start sending some things out on social media as far as some of the tips that um, Dr. Lamol, um, Dr. Gerald M. Lamol, M. L E M O L E uh, wrote in this book. My daughter actually turned me on to it. And I think as we're seeing an increase in immune deficiency disorders, it's something mm -hmm. we really need to look at our food and, mm -hmm. and our exercise. He even says our spirituality and our connection to others makes a difference within our, um, within our lymph health. So mm -hmm. find it very fascinating. And then I started thinking, of course, we're all connected. We're, we were designed to be connected as human beings or we wouldn't have tons of people on earth. Um, but in addition to that, look at how we treat our bodies. Our bodies are often looked at completely separate. Um, yes. You go to the dentist and it's like, well, some of the things that are happening in your mouth may be affecting your heart or some of the things that yes. are happening in your body with unhealthy gums are an indicator of your health in general, in your entire body. We treat the feet with a podiatrist completely separate, like it's not connected to our body. 
Yes. Um, we have different systems in our bodies. And if we didn't have them all functioning or working, we wouldn't be alive. So the interconnectedness of our bodies is as similar as the interconnectedness of of human life and nature even if we don't have one thing we don't have the sun then we don't have um the growth mm -hmm. or the we don't have rain we don't have growth of, of of what we're trying to produce for uh food and so forth so uh, we're very connected um i, yeah, think I always think of the human body as like a, a separate universe you know how we mm -hmm. think of our universe as the universe? sure i always think of it as a universe there's so much going on i saw this really cool um there's a graphic out there and we should post it on the, on the page where people can see, but there's a graphic that an artist made. I can probably pull it up and, and show everybody sure. um, where it is a, a little uh, Maya, Maya uh, protein, myelin, myosin. Oh, sure. protein, okay. protein myosin. And it is walking a bag of endorphins <laughs> into your brain to create happiness. And it looks like this little guy. It's, it's well, the coolest. And the you coolest know, thing. what's kind of interesting about that too, is when my marriage was crashing, my husband, then husband was having a mental health crisis and falling apart. I knew that if I was going to take care of myself, I needed to work out. And that is when mm -hmm. I started going to the gym and pay more attention to my physical health, my mental health through my physical health. And I just figured I, otherwise I'm going to be on a ton of medication and that is not my goal. So I am going to go to the gym. Here we go. Oh, so, oh, very interesting. Yeah. You see that? Okay. So the, the one that's red is an animation that someone made so that we could see it closer. Huh. And then the thing on the other side, that's like, you know, almost transparent. That's the real thing. So that is a protein walking a bag of endorphins into your brain <laughs> to create happiness it's true it's true and Isn't what exercise cool? does in regards to to reducing our stress and just yeah. all kinds of amazing amazing things you know what i'm going to bring steve on yeah, steve, and we'll steve do our caregiver on. question and we're going to kind of go in reverse today we're going to celebrate our 100th birthday and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the perk and did you know it's rubber ducky day that's awesome. <laughs> I know. I know. Everybody needs everybody needs to celebrate rubber. Everybody ducky. needs a rubber ducky day. So let me see. Let me go ahead and we'll find Steve's intro and I will have you come back in just a few. <laughs> Morning. Good. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're doing a reverse show today. I like it. All right. Just yeah, shaking it up a little bit. Everybody should have a rubber ducky. <laughs> everybody should have a rubber ducky. So what is our caregiver question today? Our caregiver question is, come from, comes from a lady. She says her mom is in an assisted living facility and she's constantly, <clears throat> excuse me, constantly complaining that uh, she has no friends and there's nothing to do there. And the person that wrote in is a little confused because um, she knows that there's a lot of activities going on and there's like over a hundred people in the facility. And so she wants to know if there's something that she's not understanding or something that she could look into to see what's going on with the facility and these events. Like how can she help her mom? You know, it's so fascinating. I, in, in fact, and you know, our friend, uh, Rebecca Barat, um, mm -hmm. she and I have worked on lots of activity programs, uh, larger programs for communities. Um, but let me step back a, a minute. It, sometimes, well, think about when you may have gone away to college and how you're kind of starting fresh unless you have friends that joined you or right. you're joining a brand new community of some kind. And and some people are really extroverts and they're comfortable with reaching out and making new friends. Others, not so much. And most of us are in that position. So mm -hmm. unless we are actually eager or able to make friends or talk and communicate easily, it's not uncommon for someone in assisted living to feel unconnected in a community. Right. 
Um, not just that, it, you know, there's a difference between some of the, um, the levels of care or support. So you have independent living in places you have assisted and you can get a variety of levels of support in assisted living. But there are also communities called uh, residential care, um, let's see, CCRCs, um, uh, community, uh, anyway, I'm going to forget. <laughs> I'll think of it later what it means. But it is a, uh, a facility in which they have everything. They have the assisted living, they have the independent livings, they have mm -hmm. the often the memory care or skilled nursing facility there too. And um, they, they wind up moving in often earlier, maybe a spouse has an issue, so they need additional care, but they often move in earlier and people are still working and interacting um, with their friends outside of the communities but it seems to have a richer connection or um, culture that's created within um, those types of communities. And, you know, so, I mean, just in looking basically at a community, that might be something for other people to look at. But aside from that, Rebecca and I found that when we put a program together, and we start including individuals, oftentimes they may have some memory loss too. So there's a little bit of a disconnect in being able to potentially connect a little harder for um, mm -hmm. the average bear or the, you know, what it, what it would have been like before they moved in or before they started having a decompensation. Um, and when we put groups together, they were highly interactive in the activities that we created for them where they had to connect and cross over and have a uh, conversation. And we talked a lot about the success that they were having in the specific activity that they were doing. We found that people then started feeling like they had friends. And the feedback we got was, hey, I lived in a community for three years and I never had friends before. Um, so okay. truly, I feel it's programming. It's the culture of the community that's there. I think um, we work really hard with my team now. Um, if somebody does say that they feel unconnected, that's our job to make sure that Somebody else is going to benefit too by connecting our client to another uh, person that we feel they, they have some similar interests. So in regards to the lady asking the question, go back to the community where your mother lives and say, who do you think my mom could connect with? Can we set her at the same table? Um, is there a possibility for me to come and support an activity of a group of women or you know combined people? men and women um, and we can start some activities and, and growing those those relationships that people thrive off of it helps us to right. be healthier when we have those connections so that is my yeah. advice I think that's very important having that connection and having that that person that at least having one person an activity that you know that you might not be that excited about the activity but you're gonna go see your friend and right you know, that you know, you meet one person and then you go to a couple of events and then maybe you meet a couple other people and then you form your little community within the community. Right. You have your little circle. Motivated. Yeah. Right. 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 Important. Exactly. And I think when people have um, or when organizations have well-formed clubs or groups that you can start going to the cooking group or cooking club, but still it, it's hard. It's, it's not easy to make friends and it's not, it's not any easier when you're in your 80s or 90s to try to start over to make friends. So those connections are are so important to our mental, emotional health, mm -hmm. and um, they really need to be guided oftentimes. In fact, the feedback that we would get too is, um, you know, they would have somebody who would just kind of wander the halls all day, and but their little group started collecting them and saying, "Hey, come and come, friend, come and sit with us, or let's go on a yeah. walk together," and just fascinating and marvelous results with proper programming and and um, social connecting uh, with others. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, I would be so. Do you think, or in your experience, is it harder? for people to make those connections at that age because they're used to having something else. They're used to being in a home or they're used to being with their spouse or, um, and now they're in a, just in a different situation. And then there's that 
that whole adjustment period, right? Right. And, and oftentimes we've had a lot of loss when someone mm -hmm. moves to assisted living, whether that's personal loss of function to our own body um, and or loss of uh, family or spouse. So we may have been living in the house um, and somewhat forced to move into assisted living because dad was taking care of mom and um, she passed away. And um, or we have um, uh, situations where, you know, even losing your animal, it's just, there's so much loss. So you walk in oftentimes almost in a depressed state. You can walk into assisted living in a depressed right. state and having a sense or a loss of control because my family's doing this to me. I don't mm -hmm. have any control or decision-making in this process. And, and oftentimes families do the right things as far as uh, kind of the steps to communicate and talk with their loved one about that transition into a community. But sometimes they scoff and say, oh, come on, who's going to who's going to do this for you? And who's going to take care of da, 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 da. And the rationality or the understanding in how to communicate to get through that barrier and that change and that change is scary. Mm -hmm. So think about, uh, I'm just going to rush out and go have lunch with all these people I don't know. I don't know this community. I don't know where to go to find the elevator. I don't know when they have lunch. I don't know where that activity room is that they talked about doing something fun this afternoon. I don't like the way, you know, this person looks at me. It Newness is hard sometimes. It's it's exciting. Right. It can be exciting, like a new relationship too, when you're dating. Right. But it can be scary too. The mm -hmm. the there's that balance between certainty and uncertainty that all of us thrive off of, or becomes like a fearful or um, sure. or um, trusting. We have to. We also have to have a lot of trust to expose ourselves mm -hmm. and share what we um, have in our hearts or what part of us to be able to connect with another person. You have experiences right. with another person to have those yeah. connections. That's so, accepted you as that person. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Well, these other people accept me for who I am and right. what my values are, what my you know thoughts are, what I think is funny, what they think it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. They're not laughing. <laughs> Maybe right. they didn't hear you. They couldn't hear you because we're dealing with a whole lot of, of losses. When somebody mm -hmm. moves into a community, they may have vision loss, hearing loss, um, nerve ending, nerve end, you know, damage to their nerves or, um, or pain, a lot of pain. Sometimes when somebody's in pain, they can't focus or concentrate. So they're not listening to what you're saying. But um, yeah, it's all, all very interesting. So we have rubber ducky day today. I think nice. that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see if I can find. I was part of an party. organization years ago and we had a, a rubber ducky derby. Oh, was, fun. Yeah, which is fun. We did at the Wash uh, up by the Rose Bowl. Yeah, they do a lot of fundraisers with that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We've got we've got all kinds of fun things going on here. Let's see. So let me see if I can find the right day um, on our... Is this it? I don't know. I'm going to show it in the stream now. Let's see what day is this. This is Saturday. Am I over or under? Let's see what mm -hmm. day is that. Um Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Argyle Day. Did we miss that or did I go too fast? Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. I think that's important. That. Yeah, I think that's very important. So we passed that one already. Um, Save the Eagles. We passed that one. National Milk Day. Some people love to chug milk. <laughs> Hot Tea Day. I always have my tea. There we go. It's Rubber Ducky Day. Nice. I'm going to bring, I'll bring... Um, Let's see, where is Melinda? I'm gonna bring bring Melinda back in too so we can talk about Rubber Ducky Day. And then we'll also talk it's about also whose Friday birthday. The 13th. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's right. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, yuck. So let's see. Mm -hmm. What's the pun for the day? The pun <laughs> is the duck told the bartender to just put it on my bill. Oh. <laughs> And then they had the transition between the two dicks, the two dicks in um, Bewitched. Oh, Bewitched. Yeah, remember how they had the two different ones? It was like, oh my gosh, this guy's different looking. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. So then we also have a birthday today. So let's 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 celebrate somebody's birthday. Hold on, she's she's pretty incredible looking. 
Uh, her name is Florence, but let me go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna celebrate her too. <laughs> Well, we have this beautiful lady from Ohio, Florence Kasmerik. Um, and she's at the Young at Heart Club luncheon celebrating her 100th birthday, which was on January 6th. She lives over at the, excuse me, the, <coughs> the Royal, the village of Royal Palms Beach um, community. And she's been living there since 2016 she's super active prior to moving to florida she was living in her own home and she was growing roses and her and tons of vegetables in her garden she is just absolutely loved as a mother and wife and she has been a singer and a, and performed in dancing groups such as the sweet adelines um, she worked in world war ii during world war ii she worked in an airplane factory and she also has worked as a volunteer for many years for the Red Cross in veterans groups across America. So we want to celebrate Florence's birthday today. Happy, happy birthday. I, I want to look as good as I know she looks so fantastic. So I want to look as good as she does. Um, and hopefully I'll get there and maybe with some great socialization and, um, and, and doing the right things. Maybe I'll get there. I don't know. But I just want to, I want to be, I want to be um, in a good place. So yeah. I want to be thriving <laughs> at that age. And she looks amazing. There she is just standing there enjoying a cake going, you know, blowing up. That's amazing. I mean, it's just incredible to think that somebody is just, we had a fellow in a community um, in Duarte and he was still driving at a hundred. Nice. We were and apparently the, driving pretty, well. Yeah, that's we, impressive. We were at dinner on Sunday, and there was a, a family celebrating their um, a lady's 95th birthday. And we were talking with one of her, I think it was one of her great granddaughters. And she said that uh, the lady had just renewed her driver's license. And she goes to the gym like three or four days a week and was just super active, was just so vibrant. Um, I never in my life would have thought 95 if I you know, had just seen her off the street. Just loving life. How did you know having all of her faculties, having being able to, you know, have tons of friends and family around her to celebrate 95 years? It was it was really great. Nice, nice. Okay, before we leave, do we have a day in history that we need to celebrate? Or be we do. Aware of? Okay. Sure. And I always try to find something that's you know appropriate for the show. So today I was successful, I think. In 1985, excuse me. <coughs> No, it's going around. <laughs> um, Otto Luce from Switzerland, who was 99 years old at the time, became the oldest man to record a hole in one on a golf course. This is at the Spanish golf course La, Mon La Manca, under 12 hole. It was a 130 yard uh, hole. So he made a hole in one. He's the oldest person at the time, at least, the oldest person to make a hole in one at a golf course. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. People who play golf their entire lives never have that experience. I know, and he had to get one in for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that was his his big coup. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Well, I hope that you will all think about a way to connect with others, people that make you feel good to hang around with, um, someone that you want to partner with in your exercise, or you want to have a great meal with them, or some type of a hobby to start or activity. So I, I hope that you'll all think about doing something like that and improve the quality of your life. Enjoy your long weekend. All right. We shall. Mm -hmm. We'll be up in Santa Barbara this weekend. So hopefully it won't rain Ooh. too hard. <laughs> all right, my friends. Thank you so much. All right, be safe, everyone. All right. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.